everybody welcome to your next c sharp xna platformer tutorial so the last tutorial i kind of got confused at the end but uh we basically checked if there's no collision and now we have to do something if there actually is a collision now this if this confuses you then you can always watch the xna made easy bounding boss collision tutorial uh that will uh teach you everything what you need to know about bounding boss collision now what we're gonna do is i'm not gonna i'm gonna move this update to the player class and what we're gonna do quickly is we're going to make a property for the collision map and we're just gonna get it for now okay and uh, if we go to our layers, uh, let's see our layers.cs. For our tile dimensions, we're gonna make a property for that as well. So public vector two, tile dimensions. And we're gonna get that as well. Okay, uh, so we got that done and we're going to go to our player class and then the update method, uh, this is what we're going to do. So, so we're going to go to our collision class. Uh, we're going to, for our update, let's copy this. Let's just cut that. Let's go to our player class and let's paste that in there. Now we're gonna have to, in our parameters, we're gonna have to take an instance of the collision class. So we'll say collision. Is this public? Oh, it is public, but it's in the wrong namespace. Just let me move this here. Okay, so I'm going to put in collision and I'll put like col for collision. So I'll put col dot collision map. And instead of player position, I'll just change that to position. And for the dimensions, uh, let's see, we can get that from the, the frames, we can get that from the frame width and stuff like that, but, uh, yeah, we can get that from the frame width, so we can say, uh, what's the animation, move animation, uh, oh, sorry, move animation dot, I don't know why I can't see all of them. Oh, maybe because there's errors. Uh, but let's see. Move animation dot frame width. Let's see if we had that. Okay, yeah. So we have our frame width. And so we're going to have to do, for our tile dimensions, what we're going to do is we're also, in the update methods, we're going to take an instance of the layers as well. So layers layer. Uh, so we're going to say layer dot tile dimensions dot x and uh for yeah i gotta change as well Move animation dot frame height. Okay, so uh, this will check to see if it is collided with any of the map elements that we actually loaded in. Okay, that's what's gonna happen. And for starters, uh, the way that we're gonna check collision is we're gonna check it how we uh, like how we would in say an RPG game. Uh, with free form movement right now because we don't have gravity or anything implemented 
what we want to do is to check to see if the collision is indeed working properly then we can implement gravity and stuff to incorporate collision with that so with else what we're going to do is we're just going to say position is equal to move animation dot position i'm not sure i don't know why intelligence isn't showing up uh let's see our animation class Oh, we don't have a get property for position, so let's say vector two position. Let's do a get and set. Okay. Let's go back to our player class. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna set our position to the previous position so what the position was the last frame so example so say we're moving right okay we're moving right along the game world right and uh, we hit a block right remember that move animations position is not the same as a position now remember they're two different things right the move animation position is what the position was last frame right last update so when we go back to our regular update um want to go back to update loop again it modifies this position so it will modif um this position's all modified, but remember that this position hasn't been modified yet, right? Or wait, has it been? No, it hasn't. Cause we haven't modified the position or anything yet. Uh, so what we gotta do, uh, is we're gonna add in some movement right now. Just some a bit of free form movement right now. Um, just so we can get stuff done. So we'll say that if they move right. Uh, position dot x plus equals do we have a move speed times float game time dot elapsed I don't know why IntelliSense is not showing up give me a second okay I got it to work all I had to do was um, because we are override in the entity class it wasn't the same as our virtual whatever so I copy that and so everything should be fine so we put move speed times float game time dot elapse game time dot total seconds and uh when we move left uh position dot x minus equals and we'll just copy this right here And we're gonna add in a uh, vertical movement just for now, just to test a collision, right? So else if input dot key down keys down keys s move animation dot current frame equals new vector two current frame dot y um no current frame dot x sorry dot x and it's gonna be zero for down and position dot y is gonna be plus equals the move speed and last but not least when we press up else if input dot key down keys up keys w move animation dot current frame equals new vector two animation dot current frame dot x and so be set to three position dot y minus equals in that okay uh so we got this and we'll be able to move our player around right so we'll move our player around our player's position will be modified We'll modify the position there, so on and so forth. Then we'll move animation uh, dot position will be equal to that position that we set in there. Okay. Uh, so then whenever we call position equals move animation position, that will set it to the position that it was on the previous frame. Okay. Uh, so let's test this out to see if this works. Uh, hopefully everything went properly. So. Before we can even run this, we go to our map.cs, make an instance of collision, 
uh, so we have to say collision equals to new collision collision dot load content uh, same map ID collision dot unload we don't have anything for that yet but I'll comment that out for now and um, that's all we need right uh, so let us run this program let's see so we got an error oh because the enemy uh, doesn't have this override as well oh so we gotta fill in our player overrides right here so for a collision put our collision in there we have to call map dot so we have to go to our map class sorry one last thing we have to do go to our map class and we'll just make these uh, public uh, just to make life easier right now so we'll call map dot collision and we'll call map dot layer so we'll, we'll change their properties later but we just want to see if it's actually working Okay, so we did get an error. Uh, the error was reading the map. So we gotta go to our collision.cs error I made. I forgot to put a back um uh, forward slash there. So let's run this one more time. So let's see if the collision works well. Okay, so our position isn't being modified. Okay, so let me check that quickly. So sorry about that so there's a few things that I missed to do a couple things that I didn't do one thing that we have to do is before we actually check for if statements we have to put this if statement here so if call dot collision map IJ is equal to X then we check for it because if it's equal to O then we, then why are we checking for it because it's an open space we don't need to check for a collision so when it is X then we check for a collision and then we do something with it uh, your player still not gonna move after it's because we never actually set us uh, anything for move speed right we created a, a variable for it in the entity class but we never actually set a, a set speed for it so I just set mine to 100 um, 100 F uh, so that should make it uh, run how it's supposed to so if you run this program uh, Just let me zoom out here, so you walk Once you hit a red block or something that's supposed to be collided with uh, you won't be able to walk through it same with the ground You won't be able to walk through the ground Okay, so this is just a test out to see if the collision works so using this code test it out see if it works if it doesn't work then leave a comment below you can post your code on my forum with a problem or whatever uh, but make sure um the collision actually works we are going to be modifying the collision code uh in in the next few tutorials uh but uh we had to make sure that the collision map being loaded and everything is working properly so now that's working properly now you can move on to the next tutorial so i hope you enjoyed this don't forget to comment rate and subscribe thanks for watching and bye